all of the neurons which we've studied in detail so far have encoded their outputs as variations in amplitude, either as a binary signal, as is the case with a threshold squashing function, or as a continuously varying output, as is in the case with a sigmoidal squashing function. However, as we saw in our first videos, this is not what a biological neuron does. It instead encodes its output as frequencies. A low output corresponding to a low frequency and a high output corresponding to a high frequency. It turns out that such coding is important in advanced systems. For practical reasons, which I'll describe in the next video, and for more esoteric reasons, which I will describe now. You see, networks of these neurons can produce all sorts of interacting and complex pulse trains, as one set of neurons switches on and off another set. This sort of behaviour is shown by the diagram on the screen. Not only can this encode complex information, obviously more complex than just a simple frequency or amplitude coding, but it's thought that such complex interacting pulses and groups of pulses might be an important component in consciousness itself. Unfortunately, coding such biologically accurate units is tricky and they are computationally intensive compared to a simple perceptron. The first major model of biologically feasible neurons was produced by Alan Hodgkin and Andrew Huxley in 1952 and is called the Hodgkin-Huxley model. Since then, many other models have been produced, some of which improve on the Huxley-Hodgkin model and others adopt completely different strategies. It is possible to produce an AN based on such models, but it is complex and mainly of interest to neuroscientists. Instead, in the next couple of videos, we'll outline a much simpler engineering alternative to this, which preserves the essence of spiking networks, but is much easier to code.